Welcome back to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith. Now, right off the top, I want to address the suggestion that during the last turn, after Legolas defeated the spider, I forgot to add three progress tokens to the quest deck. Now, obviously, I would never make such a basic mistake. As I'm sure many of you saw, I just used these very, very, very small progress tokens. But for those of you having trouble seeing them, I suppose, out of the goodness of my heart, I can put these needlessly bigger tokens on. <laughs> okay. Alright, so, so where were we? Okay, at the end of the last video, we had finished our combat phase, and Legolas had dispatched another enemy, as he's so good at doing, and that allowed us to resolve the Mountains of Mirkwood location. And that gave us the benefit of being able to draw five new cards. And I left you guys to tell me which one of these five cards should I pick because the rest have to be shuffled back into my player deck. Although it was first suggested by Fonzie the Capybara, far and away the most popular choice was the Horn of Gondor. He and others like Abranan recognized that our current strategy of throwing allies in the path of the enemies while Legolas picks them off for progress tokens has been really successful. And that Horn of Garndor should just help us by allowing us to draw those extra resource tokens when those unfortunate allies meet their end. So I'll just cut away now to put these cards back into my deck and give it a good shuffle. Okay, so I've shuffled the cards we didn't pick back into my player deck. And I've got to say, when I was shuffling up my deck, it felt pretty light. Now, I've got, you know, still just under half of my cards left. But I don't think I've ever lasted that long with the Tactics deck. So, I think we're doing pretty good so far. But the game's not over yet. And we have an important decision to make. I have to figure out who to attach this Horn of Gondor to. The most popular suggestions were to place it either on Legolas or Thalen. And I think I'm going to go with Bonashikwa's request that we place it on Thalen. The reasoning this user gave was that Thalen has the best hit points, and he's our main questing character. And that's true. Because of Thalen's questing ability, we probably are always going to be using him for questing, which should hopefully take him out of the line of fire in most cases and keep our Horn of Gondor safe. So I'll just attach this to Thalen now. He now has two items attached to him, which will make <laughs> exhausting his character all that much more fun. And now we can move on to the refresh phase. So we're going to ready our characters, and of course we're going to increase our threat level by one. So now it's the beginning of our next turn, the resource phase. We're going to put three more resource tokens out, and then we're going to draw a new card. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? In my videos, I really try to avoid reviewing the game and giving too much of my impression about whether I like or dislike the game. My intention here is to show you the game played and let you decide for yourself is this something you would enjoy or not? But I gotta say, I, I really like playing this game, and it's little things like this that just make me enjoy it all that much more, these crazy little coincidental funny things that happen. It's that element of chance, right? I mean, the game has a tactical strategic element, and it's got that random crazy element. So every time you play, it's a little bit different. Every time you play, something ridiculous or unexpected can happen. And I do really enjoy that in my games. But now it's our planning phase, and I have to decide which of any of these allies I want to put into play. Now, Cartoon's 80s, 90s, in the last video, I had hoped we could bring out the Gondorian Zombie Spearman, which we didn't have access to. But look, it's a Christmas miracle. We, we can play the Gondorian Zombie Spearman, and how can I not? How can I not play it? So, I'm going to pay two resource tokens and bring the Gondorian Spearman into play. Now I have three resource tokens left to spend on either of these two allies. Now these two allies are actually identical. This one costs a little bit more because it has the ranged ability. And since I don't have anything I'm really saving for in my hand right now, I think I will spend these three resource tokens and bring out the horseback archer. So this is pretty good. We've got a nice little army that's growing here, and now we have to see what we can do with it. So now it's the questing phase, and I've got to say, under normal circumstances, I would be tempted to commit all three of my heroes to the quest. Because I have enough guys over here that I could probably block and still attack during this turn. But here's the thing, I only need one more progress token on my quest deck. And unlike when you have more progress tokens than required on an active location, and you're able to put those extra progress tokens on your quest deck, when you have extra tokens to put on the quest deck cards, those extra tokens are wasted. You don't get to put them on the next quest card after you remove the top quest card or whichever quest card you're on. So in this case, I'm just going to stick to our usual plan of committing Thalen and Gimli to the quest. And that's going to give us combined willpower strength of three as usual. And now we have to add an encounter card to the staging area. You've got to be kidding me. Another treachery card! Ah! 
So you know how I just finished saying I enjoy those random elements in this game? I don't always enjoy those random elements. <laughs> okay, so this is a treachery card. It has when revealed effects and it says, each enemy in each location currently in the staging area gets plus one threat strength until the end of the phase. Well, ha, treachery card, because I have no enemies or location cards in the staging area. Oh wait, there's, there's more. If there are no cards in the staging area, Driven by Shadow gains Surge. Okay, well this is good because at least I can explain a new rule that hasn't come up yet. Surge is an effect that means you add a new encounter card to the staging area. So because these effects are resolved, we can discard the Treachery card. And now because of the Surge effect, we have to draw a new encounter card and add to the staging area. And we've got the Black Forest Bats. So right away, because of Phelan's ability, I'm going to add one damage token to the Black Forest Bats. But there are some when revealed effects here. Each player must choose one character currently committed to a quest and remove that character from the quest. The chosen character does not ready. Okay, this is very interesting. This means we have to pick one of our characters, either Thalen or Gimli in this case, and remove their willpower strength from this quest. They stay exhausted, but they will not be contributing their willpower strength. Now this seems like an obvious choice. The character with the least willpower strength is Thalen, so we will remove him from the quest. Now his card text still happens. Remember, it's only when he's committed to a quest that his card text is active. But his effect takes place before any when revealed effects of cards that are put in the staging area. So this bat remains damaged and we just remove him from the quest. So now our willpower strength is two. The threat strength in the staging area is the one from the Black Forest Bats, but also, although this treachery card has been discarded, its effect lasts until the end of the phase. So this is actually getting a bonus of plus one. So they cancel each other out and we don't get to put any progress tokens on the quest this turn. And since there's nowhere to travel to during the travel phase, we'll move right on to the encounter phase. I'm not going to choose to engage this spider because I don't have to. It's going to engage us anyway because its engagement cost is less than our current threat. So I'll move it down here. And then we can move into the combat phase. So I'm going to have to draw a shadow card, place it on the black forest bat, and then I have to pick a defender. If I block with a zombie spearman, the only problem is he'll kill the black forest bats outright. And I would like to be able to kill the Black Forest Bats with Legolas so I can put some more progress tokens on our quest deck. So I think instead I'll declare the Horseback Archer as the defender. Okay, to resolve this attack, we have to flip over the Shadow card. There is a Shadow effect here. Defending player must choose and discard one attachment he controls. Let's resolve the math here and then we'll, we'll deal with that. So the attack strength of one... And defensive one means they cancel each other out, so no damage is going to happen to our horseback archer. But now we're going to have to get rid of an attachment. I don't think we really have a lot of choices here. If I remove the armor, then Thalen's basically on the, you know, the edge of death here, so I don't want to remove his life support armor. Um, Legolas has got this weapon, which is giving us progress tokens when he defeats an enemy, plus it gives him a bonus to his attack strength against orcs. So that's useful. I know we just brought out the Horn of Gondor, but... That seems like the weakest card to get rid of. I'd love to <laughs> pass this off to you guys, but I don't think we've done enough of a turn here to end here. So I guess I'm going to have to go ahead and commit to this decision. I'm going to remove the Horn of Gondor from play. And now this card here is also discarded. And now we get to attack back. No surprises here. We will attack with Legolas. He's got attack strength of three. The bats have no defense, so that's certainly going to be enough to destroy them. And we'll remove them from play. And then, of course, we will get three progress tokens, three regular-sized progress tokens that we could place on our quest deck. I know I've already made this pretty clear, but I'll just say this one more time. I have three progress tokens that I can place, but I only need one, so I'll place that one on here. And these other two are wasted. They don't carry over to the next quest card. But I have resolved this location, so I can remove these tokens from the quest deck and remove this card. Now we're on to a fork in the road. As you move through Mirkwood, hounded by spiders, and orcs and a variety of other things, the forest path forks before you. Okay, so now we can flip this card over. And what we see here is this location only has two quest points. So once we get two progress tokens on this card, we'll resolve it, so that's good. Let's see what it says here. Unsure of what lies ahead, but spurred by the urgency of your message, you choose a path and proceed. So this has forced effects. 
When you defeat this stage, proceed to one of the two a chosen path stages at random. So you'll notice here, just below this card, there's actually two 3A cards. So we're going to have to randomly choose one of these once we resolve this card. So now we can refresh. And then, of course, we have to add one to our current threat level. We're getting up there. But now it is the resource phase of our next turn. So I'm going to add one resource token to each of our heroes and draw a new card. And look, it's the, uh, the Blade of Gondolin. So we've had this before, maybe a while since you've seen the picture, but that's actually what Legolas is holding on to right now. So because we have three resource tokens, we can basically bring all of these into play, and I don't see a reason not to. So I'll start by spending two resource tokens here and bring out the Veteran Axe Hand. And now we have to choose which of our heroes to attach this Blade of Gondolin to. And the nice thing is this item is not unique. There are some cards in the game that are unique. They are represented with a little symbol beside their name. I'll, I'll zoom in in a second to show you what that symbol looks like. But as long as a card is not unique, you can have more than one copy of it in play. And you could have more than one copy of it attached to the same player. The only restriction is if the card says restricted, you can't have more than two of a restricted card attached to a particular character. But we only have one Blade of Gondol attached to Legolas, and so you can probably imagine what I'm thinking here. Why not attach two? <laughs> and that way when he defeats an enemy, he'll be able to add an additional progress token to the quest. Not to mention he's now going to be hitting orcs for an additional two attack strength. So I'm just going to put this card here with Legolas and I wanted to zoom in so you could see there's the unique symbol. So if a card has one of these symbols on it, no other player can have it in play and the same player cannot have two copies of it in play at a time. So Legolas is now armed to the teeth. Uh, let's quest. We'll put Gimli and Thalen on the quest again and we'll reveal the top card from the encounter deck. The Hummerhorns. Okay, this is a card I've actually never seen in play yet. Let's take a closer look. So first off, let's damage it because Thalen's committed to the quest. And as I said, I've never actually played this card before in a game, and if I had, I probably would have had a more negative reaction when I drew him. It doesn't look too bad on the surface. It's only got one threat strength and two attack strength, and look, no defense. Really, three hit points isn't too bad. But it's got this massive engagement cost, and here's why. This is a very deadly character. It has a forced effect. After Hummerhorns engages you, deal five damage, five damage, to a single hero you control. A single hero. You can't dump this off on your, <laughs> your zombie spearman. You gotta put all five damage on a hero. This is a nasty enemy. I'm not gonna be in any rush to engage this enemy, because five damage would kill Legolas, would kill Gimli, and, yep, it would kill Thalen as well. So we're going to be leaving this enemy up in the staging area for sure. But let's resolve our quest. So we've got three willpower strength committed to the quest, one threat strength up here. That means we can place two progress tokens on our current quest. And hey, good news, that means we've resolved this particular quest card and we can remove it from play. So you'll remember, once we resolve this card on the quest deck, we now have to randomly choose one of the final two cards in the quest deck. And I am going to leave this to you guys. You'll notice here I'm going to leave the camera exactly in this position and you guys are going to vote for either the top card or the bottom card. You can come back in the next video and compare pixel for pixel. I'm not changing anything. If you guys pick top card, then that's what we're going with. If you pick the bottom card, that's what we're going with. And who knows what we're going to unveil. So you guys start voting, you're going to have about uh, 18 hours to make your decision. I'll tally the votes at that point, and then we'll resume play. I'm looking forward to it. We'll see you then.